all I could think of was the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It's written all over those papers, amen. And I laugh because some of what God gave Elder Taylor is in here. Right. But I guess that's what you were talking about. The chorus, right. the harmony. Right. I know a little something about it. But you know what? I laugh because just two years ago, I never would have thought I would have been up here doing anything other than singing. Right? But God has been too good to me and my family for me to sit around on an obvious call. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So I give honor to my Savior today. It is because of Him and Him alone that I live, move, and have my being. Amen. Give honor to my senior pastor, uh, my fellow elders, uh, associate pastors, ministers, the voices of life. Yeah. Yeah. My people, uh, church, family, friends, and last but second to God, my wife. Uh, and some of you know over the past years, we haven't been here on New Year's Eve service, and that's not because we are, you know, practicing our Chicago stepping at the club. Although we know how to Chicago step. But it's because New Year's Eve is my wife's birthday. So I really want to wish my wife a happy birthday anymore. And you'll have to excuse me because I'll have to leave early after God is finished with me uh, so I can properly uh, entertain my wife on a special day. So I'll be coming from a few scriptures. Uh, first one is Hebrews 11 and 6. And without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. And in keeping uh, with the theme of tonight's service, don't stop. I want to deal with the second wind of faith. The second wind of faith. Let us pray. Father God, I come right now. Thank you for this opportunity to serve and worship you in spirit. And in truth, now God, I decrease as you increase within me, Lord. Let your word fall on the good soil. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Now, many of you uh, former athletes know what a second wind is. Uh, Google, the new Webster, defines it as a person's ability to breathe freely during exercise after having been out of breath. A new strength, somebody say new strength. Yeah. Our energy to continue something that is an effort, and I haven't have read an encyclopedia in over 20 years, but Wikipedia says a second wind is a phenomenon in distance running, such as marathons or road running, as well as other sports, whereby an athlete who is out of breath and too tired to continue suddenly, somebody say suddenly, suddenly. finds the strength to press on at top performance with less exertion. I played basketball for four years at Tulu College on a basketball scholarship. Yes, and one of the things I hated most about playing basketball in college was the coach used to run us in the ground. I mean, we worked on running more than we worked on offense, which is probably why we didn't win a lot of games. But I would frequently get to moments during our workout drills where I felt like I couldn't go anymore. Right? But my mind would take over and I would just tell myself, you're not a good at keeping moving. And now I'm going to keep it moving. And then I received a second wind yes, and was able to complete that drill or that practice. So I don't care who we played. In the last 10 minutes of that second half, our opponents were about to fall over and you're still fresh. Now, that doesn't mean you won. <laughs> so in dealing with the second wind of faith, life changing faith, my question to you tonight is, how are you preparing for your out-of-breath moments? Huh. How will you prepare for your out of breath moment? I, I want to deal with three points tonight that will help you prepare for your out of breath moment. The foreclosure image, or the, the bad doctor's report that takes your breath away. 
I want to help you prepare for that so you can reach your second wave of faith. The first point is, your test is by design, not for your demise. The test is by design, not for your demise. From what I've noticed over the years uh, in dealing with, interacting with fellow, which feel is fellowship with church folk, and let me define church folk. I'm not talking about the CME delegation. Now, if you don't know what the CME stands for, you're head of that delegation. But I'm talking about believers that come to church to be refueled so they can go back outside the four walls of the church and be a lamp on the hill shining the light of Jesus Christ. Wherever they go, let the church folks say amen. 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 But in my observations, church folks have zero problems believing that there is a God. Amen. Wish that, that, that he would be created the heavens and earth by speaking it into existence and that he came to earth in the form of man to live the perfect life down the cross by sins, raised by salvation. We are good there. Right? right? We even good believing that God will provide, right? Amen. But let us lose that first job. Um, <laughs> there go my dreams. You know what? I mean, I don't know about the church. Right. No, no. God, as a matter of fact, just take me now. Elizabeth, I'm coming home. You know, the first moment we're out of breath, all of a sudden, you know, we're not making YouTube videos denouncing Christianity, but that thing God told you in your quiet room, now you're telling your family and friends, ah, I wasn't right about that. You know, the scripture is God is not a man. That he should not, not the other way around, man. But all of a sudden, we're doing everything we can to fix our own situations. Because the little man that wrote the self-help book said, God helps those who help themselves, right? And he must be right because he sold a lot of books. So I'm going to try his way for a little bit. Insert our own personal issues, our own financial setbacks, health problems, marital problems, whatever that thing is, insert our asphyxiation there. Our out of breath moment there, and now we're not so sure about the power of God. I mean, I believe God are part of the Red Sea, but can you part my checkbook? I mean, I believe God fed the 5,000 for two fish and five loaves of bread, but can he make my credits more than my debits? You know? I mean, can he separate my phone number from the bill collector? I see some concerning faces. Don't worry, people of God, I'm not talking about you. This is my story. I know y'all got it together. Right. Look, I'm not telling you to disregard what you feel or uh, live in denial. You know, that'll just lead to frustration. I've been there. Pastor said uh, something this past Wednesday at the Bible study to acknowledge your feelings, recognize your humanity, but worship the divinity. Proverbs 16 and 4. I like the new international version on this scripture. It says, the Lord works out everything to his proper end, even the wicked, for a day of disaster. Amen. Listen, lean on the fact that God has sovereignty over every situation. Yes. He has designed your trial just for you. So that when he brings you out, two things will happen. One, your faith capacity will have increased. And two, you can tell someone else going through a similar situation how they can make it through that same trial. Right? All for the glory of God. Amen. Amen. But why is, why is, why is it that we believe and trust God with our eternity, but fail to trust Him with our day to day lives? God didn't pull us from the hands of the enemy to leave us to our own devices. Amen. Amen. God is not just the God of the big events, God is big enough. He's big enough to be the God of each and every one of his children's little details. God is the God of the minutia of life. And this is not just my opinion. Psalm 37 and 23, the New Living Translation says, The Lord directs the steps of the godly. Get this. He delights in every detail. Every detail of their lives. Not just the big trials, you know, or the big triumphs. But he wants to be involved in what you decide to eat. He wants to be involved in the route you take to work. Amen. What does Proverbs 3 and 6 say? In all your ways, acknowledge him or seek counsel from him and he will what? 
Direct your path, make your pathway straight. Amen. Now, did it say you would fully understand uh, the path? No, it didn't. Which brings me to my next point. You have to exercise the word of God so that you can be encouraged when the pathway is unclear. There is purpose in the Bible stories about David waiting for the deliverance from his enemies. Joseph waiting for the promise that he would be leader of his people after being thrown to the bottom of a well and yes. sold into slavery. But understand, what my freeway, freeway is to say? I got to where the tears not here. Yeah. But as Pastor said in his sermon a few weeks ago, you're not always going to know the why of your situation. But if you're not exercising this free weight right here, this 66 pound weight, then you won't know how God wants you to grow from your situation. Right. Hebrews 11 and 6 again says, we must believe that he is, or he is God, right. and that he is a rewarder of those who seek him. I mean, we, we got the lip service right. We got that right. You know, some of us will proclaim that we believe God all day, but our actions show we believe in a genie in a bottle instead. You know what? Nobody wants to know who the genie. Nobody wants to know about the genie. I don't need to know his backstory, right? I just want my three wishes. So let me roll up on this Bible right here and see what I can get out of God. And let me say this. Uh, I don't want to pick on y'all, but I, I love the fact that God picked on me first. I love the fact that people have these electronic Bible because I have two. That's great, but there's nothing like having the physical, physical page, and I'll tell you why. Uh, pass my phone yeah, on, on the phone. I used to wake up in the morning thank you guys. And I would reach for my phone to get a morning word from the Lord. So, so I went a little something like this. Let me see what God has for me today. I'm excited to hear a word called the cowboy release right there. Oh man, I've been waiting for him to come out with another YouTube video. I, Somebody responded to my comment on Facebook. Now, I need to hear what God has to say, but I'm going to take a quick peek at what they have to say first. Now, I see they took my whole comment out of context. And if I don't respond now, I'm going to forget to do it after I read the word of God. And 30 minutes later, after I have replied to Amen. all the text messages, and emails, and, and my notifications, watched all my videos, like a few of the notifications. Now I got five minutes to dedicate to God before I get, have to get ready to go to work. You know, uh, Bobby Boucher is going to say a fool's ball is the devil. <laughs> Phone notifications is a close second, I tell you. Life like change favor, I conclude my story. You know, when we get up in the morning, let's make sure we're liking what God says before we like what our Facebook God says. You know the people at the gym, the people at the gym for an hour when they only exercise for 10 minutes. And the rest of the time, they were on their phone, right? Sitting on the workout machine, doing everything but working out. Got people waiting to use the machine, but I need to finish my puzzle first. I see some concerned faces. Don't worry, people are not. I'm not talking about you. This is my story. I know y'all got it together. But if you're not exercising, reading, the word of God, you won't know the will of God for your life or be able to receive the muscle of encouragement from it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Knowing that you can give your burdens to the Lord because he cares for you and he will sustain you and that he is your hiding place and he preserves you from trouble and that he surrounds you with songs of deliverance. You know, these and other scriptures are how God comforts us, encourages us, and restores us when the fatigue of life gets us. You'll react differently when you lose your job because you'll remember that God told you he would provide for your every need anyway and that he has something better for you anyway. When you're allowed to exchange your yoke, your yoke for God's yoke, life becomes that much more peaceful. Now, I'm not talking about the world's peace, right? I didn't say you won't have trials and tribulations. Jesus said you would have trouble. But what I am saying is if you're willing, God will exchange your weakness for his strength. He will exchange his joy for your sorrow, which will allow you to be of good cheer in the midst of your pain. 
and you'll suddenly say suddenly, suddenly. have supernatural peace or less exertion in the midst of job loss or in the midst of marital issues or in the midst of bad doctor's report. God is Yahweh Nisa. These people are better people of God yes. because the battle is already won. Because Jesus overcame, we overcome present perfect tense, which means our victory literally don't stop. Amen. 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 So this, but you won't know any of that if you don't open up and exercise the word of God. Amen. So you understand that the test is by design, not for your demise. And you're exercising the word of God, allowing it to encourage you during the test. My third and final point <clears throat> to help you get to the second wind of faith. This may stink a little bit, but I have to say what God told me to say. My name is Emmett and I ain't in it. I'm just a vessel up here, right? So my third point is you might have to get burned. You might have to get burned. I remember the beginning of my sophomore year, I had not ran at all that summer. So first practice, uh, coach is doing what he always do. He's running us to death. And halfway through the practice, I have to run out the door to regurgitate, right? And it felt like all that laying around the house, eating everything inside and drinking gallons of Kool-Aid, all came out at one time, right? <laughs> and after I emptied myself, I was good to go for the rest of the practice. Now, this next part of the sermon might not be for everyone in here. If that's the case, I ask that you be in prayer for the people that it is for that they may receive it on good ground. I submit to you that some of you need to regurgitate some bad habits. Some of you need to allow God to burn off, empty you of pride, anger, gossiping spirit, yeah, uh -huh. empty you of yourself before, before you can get to yourself. If you live in any kind of way, that house, that car, that job that you've been believing God for, it might as well be a million miles away. Yeah. All right. All right. <laughs> Let me make it personal. You see, I thought I was a pretty good, pretty good Christian until God showed me wow. myself. I thought I was a pretty humble guy, you know. I always say glory to God, right? <laughs> until God showed me I was full of myself. Wow. Coming to church every week, giving given faithfully, involved in ministry, it, let me make it plain. The work slide did not match the church slide. And it wasn't until God took some things away and they hurt. Gave me first degree burns, right? That I was able to sit under him and see him more clearly, which led me to see myself more clearly. Talk about humble. And then I allowed him to burn that pride off because I couldn't do it under my own power. It was God that changed my desires, not me. You don't have to go there, but Jonah 1 and 2 says, God tells Jonah, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Amen. Now we all know for the next four chapters, Jonah goes through a bunch of unnecessary trials because he wanted to do what he wanted to do. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. 2 Corinthians 1 and 20. For as many as are the promises of God, in him they are yes. Amen. Therefore also through him is our amen to the glory of God through yes. us. Yes. The promises of God are yea and amen. amen. But what I've learned over the years is yea is a loaded word when it comes to receiving the promises of God. He doesn't change. Amen. His amen. promises don't either. But some of you need to take a trip to them first. Yeah. Wow. Whatever your enemy is, mm -hmm. whatever that thing is that God told you to do that you haven't done, Amen. some of you need, you know, a job and have put your faith into action by filling out the application that God has been trying to tell you for years that you have an issue with that. And every time you get on your knees to pray, you're telling God about all the needs. And then right when he's ready to talk, you already left the closet. Good yeah, right? talk, God. I feel much better now. <laughs> you said what you needed to say about it. You see, I see some concerned faces. There's some people, God, I'm not talking about you. I am not. I am not. I'm 
I'm trying to help somebody here. You know, this, this might not be Amen. the typical New Year's Eve message, but God wants to set some people free. Yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? Stick with it. I've said this on the radio a few times, but relationship is about conversation, just some practical application. Yes. Before I read the word of God, I pray for God to lead me to the scripture he has for me, right. and for me, for that particular day, and give me understanding. I have just talked to God. I open up the Bible to wherever he leads my finger. I actually do that. I'll just close my eyes and open up to wherever he leads my finger. And I'll read or hear what he has to say to me. Sometimes it's the answer I was looking for. Sometimes he leads me to scripture that tells me I need to work on some things. Regurgitate some things. Allow God to burn out some things before I get the answer that I'm looking for. God has just spoken to me. Amen. And after I read that chapter, I, I pray to God about what I just read and the Holy Spirit, and that the Holy Spirit would give me strength to obey. I just spoke his word back to him. <laughs> now as I meditate on his word, I'm waiting to see if he has anything else to say to me. Life changing faith on the simplest level. That's relationship. Yeah. That's a two-sided conversation, not a monologue. monologue. Relationship will give you perspective when you're going through your trials, when you get that first degree burn for God, whether that burn is from your own doing, like it was for me, or you're living the righteous life like Job was, the realization should be the same. God is using your trials for your good, which means you can count it all joy at the various trials you're going through, knowing that the testing of your faith produces perseverance, which will build up your character to prepare you for the higher elevation. God promised you in your quiet time. Amen. Amen. The right perspective will lead you to the second, third, fourth, and fifth way of faith and carry you until God's promises for your life come to fruition. Amen. And as I close and the new year approaches, life changing faith is important that you don't stop believing what God promised you. Amen. Amen. But it's also important that you listen to what God is trying to tell you while you wait for those promises to come to fruition. Which means you have to read and obey his word, amen. It is literally health to your navel, marrow to your bone, a light, lamp to your feet, a light to your pathway. It is life, yes. amen. And I talked about the example set by David and Joseph who actively waited for the promises of God to come to fruition in their lives. But our greatest example is Jesus. Hebrews 12, 2 and 3 says, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider who, him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart, amen, so that you will not get asphyxiated and quit. Jesus was the ultimate example, amen, of someone who didn't stop. Although his friends that Walked with him for three years, abandoned him, one of them betrayed him, another one denied him so emphatically that he used a four-letter word for added impact. Jesus still sold on the table. He still sold. He kept his eyes on his father's redemptive plan. And while we were yet sinners, not just those twelve, but while we were the kings and queens of sinners, doing our dirt, he died so we might become the righteousness. Of God. So just as, as Jesus kept his eyes on his father's plan, I submit to you that in the face of your trials that take your breath away, in the face of setbacks, keep your eyes fixed on Jesus, the author and finish of your faith. And as you get strength and direction from his word, as you obey what he tells you to do, you will gain more strength while you actively wait on his promise. You shall get a second wind of faith and run and not get weary. You shall walk and not faint. And as you pass every test, as you run every lap around life, the angels are cheering you on. Jesus yes, is yes. cheering you on. He wants to complete what he started in you. Amen. But you have to do your part and stay in the race. Yes, Don't yes. stop running, man. Don't stop believing. Your blessing will come again. Yes.